Hello, this is the Provoke Brawn, and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up MSI's Core Liquid E360 all-in-one cooler. This is set up in an MSI case with MSI fans and other bits, and I'm going to show you the process for installing it and setting it up and making sure you get the most out of it with testing as well as the wiring and all the other logic, and how to group it into MSI's other fans so you can get the RGB lighting synced. Now for this video, I'm using an AM5 motherboard, which is Project Zero, and I'll show you the setup process for AM5 AMD motherboards and talk about that. But the logic will also apply across both the white and black versions of the cooler. It's also worth noting that in this case, I've top mounted the radiator. This might not be the best setup for you. I'll link in the description to a video I've done testing the various different orientations of all-in-one coolers and where to put them. So you can find out more about that and the logic of it. But in this case, it actually makes sense to top mount it. I'm gonna show you the setup process for doing so. Once you unbox the Core Liquid E360, you'll find there's a lot of things included in here in various different bags that are clearly labeled, which will be helpful, but it may be a little bit intimidating especially when you get them all laid out. Some of the things you just won't need, so if you're doing an Intel build, then obviously you'll need that Intel parts, and if you're doing AMD, you'll need the AMD parts, but either way, you can get rid of some of the parts at least and make it a little bit less confusing. So I'm gonna just quickly talk you through all of those to help out. There's also various different cables here which have different uses. You have two different splitter cables for your fan power connection, so I'll talk about those in a minute. But these are the screws we're going to be needing. Chassis screws, fan screws for the radiator, those four tiny Intel screws and the AMD bracket. So these are the tiny Intel screws. What they do is they connect the bracketing to the pump head. So these brackets that you can see here, that's what you're going to use to connect it up to the motherboard. They first need to be connected up to the pump head itself. So on this bit where the sticker is on either side, you'll notice there's some slots on either side here and some holes that's where that bracketing needs to go and then needs to be screwed in. So we're slotting that in in this way. What you're going to do is make sure the hook is on the bottom because that hook is going to hook over the plastic bit on the standoffs that are already on the motherboard. We then put the two screws in there. So those were from the bag marked Intel screws, which is confusing for an AMD build, but something to watch out for. You just screw that in and that will secure that bracket into place. So there's four screws, two on either side. So you have to do the bracketing on each side of the pump and repeat the process until it's fully secured down. So basically this is set up so that you can install either AMD or Intel brackets, depending on what you're doing. I'm using an AMD build here, so we're just gonna to stick to doing the AMD logic for this build. And then you should end up with a view that looks like this with these kind of loose brackets and that they hook over. They're a little bit fiddly to install, but essentially they just hook over the motherboard and secure that down. I'll show you what to do in a second. But first of all, you want to work out the logic of where you're going to put the radiator because you have two options, essentially. You can put it with the tubes on the right-hand side and it will look something like this. And it's worth sort of working out which way you prefer, depending on how you're doing your build and whether you're going to carry on using that rear fan or maybe you're doing things a little bit differently. So I just sort of test fitting it working out which way around I'd prefer. Are the tubes going to interfere if I'm on the left? Is it preferable aesthetically if it's on the right? How are you going to secure it in there? Will it fit, etc. So it's a 360 mil radiator. It will fit nicely in there. What I'm going to do is put the tubes this way around. You can just suss out how it will look. It's worth doing this because it also helps with the logic of things. Because obviously the next thing to do is we're going to be mounting the fans onto it. And we need to make sure we're mounting the fans in the right position. Now, these fans are very similar to the ones we've got in the case. They have a very similar sort of design look and feel to them. They're not identical, but they do wire in in a similar way. And they do end up looking quite nice with the same sort of RGB. On the fan, you'll notice there's two cables. But one of them is that 5-volt RGB connector, which is 3-pin. You also have male and female connectors on this, which means that you can daisy-chain these fans together, going from one connector to the other for the 5-volt RGB connection, which means you're looping these fans in, and it will make life a lot easier when connecting up the RGB, because you don't have to plug them in individually. And then there's a fan power connector as well. When you fan power from each of them, so you have three fan power connectors, but I'll show you what to do with that because you have these adapters. So there are two 
adapters included. One you'll notice there's noise reducer on it. So if you want to keep the noise low, which will obviously negatively impact cooling performance, use that one or use the other one, risk it being a bit louder, but your CPU will be cooler. So you've got to make a trade off and decide which one of these you prefer. I'm going for the standard cable rather than the noise reducer. So you plug in your three fan power cables from each of the fans, and then you have a single connector on the other end, and that then plugs into the CPU fan header on your motherboard. Usually this is on the top right on a standard motherboard. And what this does is it allow your motherboard to control the speed of the fans on the radiator. So if a CPU gets hot, the fans can spin up faster. That will then cool the coolant down inside the all-in-one cooler and theoretically help cool the CPU. The system will then allow you to connect up the pump head to the AIO pump header. So all parts of the system are then controlled by your motherboard. So the three fan connections go to the CPU fan header. On this rear connect motherboard, you can see that plugs in at the back and then the pump will plug into the pump fan connector or AIO pump header, depending on what motherboard you're using. So you've got two different connections you need to remember for this, but that'll ensure the pump works properly, so it's pushing coolant around inside, and the fans are also spinning up. For the RGB connections, what you want to do is put one fan into the next. So you take the male connector and plug it into the female connector for the next fan along. And then you repeat that process once again, so for the next fan, you take the male connector for that and plug it into the female connector of that next fan. And what you can do is you can create a chain between each of the fans and then also the pump head itself. And then you can connect those up so that the RGB will be the same across all three fans and the pump head. So the RGB lighting will sync across all of those when it's connected up properly and fully to the system. So you just slot those in and then what you have is one part of the system. You can see at the first fan, you've then got a 5-volt RGB header, which you can then connect to the motherboard on the 5-volt RGB header, JARGB. It's a three-pin connection, so you'll find that somewhere on the motherboard. On this Strix motherboard, it's on the top right. And in other locations, you may find it on the bottom. There are various different places. On the MSI Project Zero motherboard, for example, you can see one at the rear at the top kind of near where the CPU fan connection is. And then you might find some others down the bottom. Here's a gigabyte board where it's marked VDG. You can see you can plug that in. So don't try and use the four pin one. You need to make sure you're using the three pin. What this allows you to do though is control the RGB lighting from your motherboard software so that you can control the fan and pump RGB from there as a group. So to connect the fans up, what you want to do is use those long screws. We're going to screw them into the radiator. So you've got 12 screws to go into the fans. They go through the fans and then into the radiator. Screw those down, secure those in place. Don't forget to remove the little stickers from the top. And then how this works is the pump would then sit over the CPU and the little hooks there on the bracketing that we put in place basically hook over that placement and then you just screw the thumb screws down to tighten it up. It's a little bit fiddly to do. I just wanted to demonstrate this from this angle. Obviously, you'd wait until the full things in your system first before securing it. But I want to show you roughly how you do it. Once your motherboard's set up and ready to go with your CPU, RAM, and other bits, you know, obviously need to install it in the case. This is an MSI case that I'm using in this build. Obviously, this is a rear connect motherboard as well, as you've seen already. But the standard installation, just install your motherboard and then secure it down with the various different screws before going about installing the cooler. And then we're going to put the AIO in once again, making sure we're happy with how it lines up and where it's going to sit obviously with the tubes on the right hand side here and then all the cabling from the fans which are going to have to run to the rear and that's the benefit of this is that you will be able to do that so remove the top of the case by using the thumb screws at the rear to loosen it remove that bracketing and then we're going to seat this on top so you have the chassis screws included which are the small ones so what you need to do is basically run those through the case and into the radiator from the top here and secure them. There's loads of different screws here, so I'm going to shorten this process. But what you need to do is make sure you secure all of them so that it's nice and tight in there and it's not going to move around. Just some tiny screws securing into all of the little holes in the radiator and securing that in place so that it's set up top there. And again, what's going to happen here is the air is going to come through from the fans, be pulled out, pushed up through the radiator and out the top and then you've got air being exhausted at the rear as well. I then have to maneuver these cables. So this is the fan power and RGB cables. 
and push those through to the back. You can see there's quite a mess here. Obviously, there's a lot of cables to deal with. We're going to need to do some cable tidying and sorting, but the fact that you can move them to the rear is quite nice. I did find this to be a little bit fiddly, so you might want to consider doing this before you secure the radiator. Again, that'll be fiddly too, but what you can do is basically get behind that and push it through the holes that are up there and negotiate that around. I've sped this process up, but the other thing to do is to flip the case over and pull it through from the other side. You might find it a little bit easier to do. Once it's through on the other side, you can then take advantage of the plastic cable ties and the various different hooks down here and then secure it as we go through securing those into place. Then once that's done, you want to use the splitter cables that I showed you a minute ago to take the fan power connections from the fans, so the three connectors, and put them into one. Once again, plug that into the CPU fan header on the motherboard, which in this instance is in the top left here. Obviously, we'll need to secure these cables and tidy them up a bit as well to make sure there's not too much mess in that area. Now for the CPU setup with the thermal paste, I'm actually using this thermal paste guard from Noctua, which sits over the top of this AMD CPU and blocks the paste from going over the edges, which is quite nice. And then you put a blob of thermal paste in the center of a CPU. And I personally like to use a spatula to spread it out so you have a thin layer of thermal paste across the entirety of the IHS to ensure there's good thermal conductivity between the CPU and the cooler. Carefully spread that out, and don't forget to do this, obviously, before seating the cooler down over the top of the CPU, because if you do, then you will have a problem, and it won't cool properly. The other thing to do is to make sure you take care to remove the plastic cover from the CPU block as well, so it says you've got a warning label here. Make sure you take that off. And then what we're going to do is lower the pump head down over the top, you're going to position it so that those little notches with the thumb screws on them basically hook over the plastic block at the top and bottom of the CPU. So you've got these standoffs in place as standard. What I find is it's easy enough to do one, secure it a little bit, then put the second one down, hook it over there because they jut out a little bit, secure that, tighten both thumb screws, go back and forth between them carefully, taking your time and then eventually you should finally be able to secure that down nicely. Don't forget, we also have the two cables coming out of the pump head. One that needs to connect to the AIO pump header on the motherboard, and the other one is your RGB connector, which needs to daisy chain to the fans to make sure that all the RGB matches up nicely, or connect it directly to the motherboard so you can control the pump's RGB individually and separately with the motherboard software. However, it's worth noting that what I discovered is that you can use the male and female connectors from these so that you can actually connect them into the group of fans. So if you're using an MSI case like I am, or MSI fans, which have those daisy chain connections on them with the 5 volt RGB connector, much like the ones on the radiator of the case, you could potentially run them through to the back and then group them into the other fans you've already got connected to the system. For example, I've got four fans in this case that are connected to this controller at the bottom, if I disconnect the group there and then connect the radiator with all the fans on it and the pump head into that, we then have a chain which includes all the fans in the case and all the fans on the radiator and the pump all looped together. So you just need to make sure that each of the cables is connected to the other. And then that's connected to this controller, which then runs to the front of the case and allows you to change the lighting with the LED button on there. So you can just press a button on the case and it will cycle through the various different RGB effects that are on that case and on that button via the controller. Naturally, if it's also connected to the motherboard with a 5 volt connection from that controller, you can then also control the RGB lighting with the motherboard software. But you can see that this opens up the possibilities of syncing the lighting across your cooler and your case fans as well if you're using MSI's fans at the same time. Once everything's installed and set up, I'd recommend doing some thermal testing on your system. I use Cinebench R23 or the later version, the 24, and Hardware Monitor or Hardware Info 64. You can combine these two tools to run a benchmark on the CPU. Cinebench basically puts your CPU under a lot of load, and then you can use Hardware Monitor, you can see on the right-hand side, to check the temperatures haven't got too high. As long as you're not seeing a lot of red indicators in the temp levels, then you should be fine. If you're finding that it's very high in the 90 degree mark, then there might be a problem. Perhaps the thermal paste wasn't done well, or perhaps you need to tighten up the thumb screws on the cooler a bit better. 
or maybe think about the airflow in your case. There are other things that can impact it. But this is worth doing just to make sure that everything's not going red and the whole system's falling apart after you've done the install. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, check out the links in the description to more that might help with your PC build. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.